who were hired black CIA, the first ones they hired with the sole job of not to take down whites, but to take down another fellow black person who was succeeding in building an economical base. That was an agenda. So there are always agendas behind things to serve the rich and powerful and so forth and so on. But the saints of God, you know, we, we don't just shout here. This is a place of enlightenment and right. knowledge because King was right that the church, the black church, is our greatest institution of learning. It ain't just a place where we shout, it's the place where we learn. It. Amen. King recognized the church is the greatest. For the black culture, it's the greatest institution of learning. That's our university, as well as our spiritual worship. So we come to be enlightened in our purpose. We're going to be enlightened here. So, uh, <clears throat> and so they stopped the progress of a fellow uh, brother. And I'm a little bit disturbed whether you agree or disagree with what I will pastors of clout are not standing with some of our fellow brothers who are being attacked. You know, we don't have to agree on everything, but you can't attack a brother don't expect backlash to let you know I ain't going to take that. Amen. Amen. You feel comfortable, comfortable enough to attack me because you know we're going to stick down. Poster of a white, white older gentleman grabbing that young lady working at McDonald's and snatched her by the collar to pull her across the counter. And our brothers were standing by. Why would you feel comfortable enough to grab somebody because you know that we're not going to do nothing? Mm. So people are comfortable to do what, to disrespect you when they know that nobody's going to stand with you. Right. That was disheartening. Amen. See, it don't take one person to risk going to jail because he'd have never grabbed another young black sister 20 years old. Amen. He'd never grab another girl. He'd have lost 40. Amen. But we too busy sharing stuff and laughing saying, look at that. You don't understand how you're being disrespected and trampled on and it's funny because we just want to record and post it. People are comfortable and disrespectful. Amen. So this is a house of worship, a house of prayer. It is also an institution of how you learn. You're going to get empowered with the spirit and also with knowledge. You're going to work with your heart, work with your body, and work with your mind. Amen. Amen. We're going to start work with really if the spirit ain't in trouble, it's the mind that's in trouble, but we're going to free that mind and everything else will follow. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord. I've been, I have been um, open to, for a word to be shared from you know, many voices. And ABC is open to you. You know, you, God has given you a word. And I've been asking, you know, ministers and you know, prophets, prophets, and all to just share what's on your heart. So, Ready to just open up during this time. I'll probably start a series next Sunday. Um, and I've already been looking over what I, what direction I want to go um, for this hour. And I'll prepare to do that for the day. I want to uh, also share, allow prophet uh, to share what God laid us on here. Powerful testimonies of things that's been happening. And I know it's a word. And so we're going to, I know I looked a little bit over on Sunday. And so we'll see if we get out of anything in 20, 25 minutes or so, 30. But I want you to receive uh, Prophet Hamilton, my good dear friend. He's also a shareholder in Bro Breeze, so don't fool yourself. You know. <laughs> He's a bad boy over there. <laughs> Amen. Bad boy. But God is blessing him. He's, 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 he's a man of integrity and in walking. For that, he is being elevated, even on job, for his integrity and for his, his love for God. That's a, see, that's the way to get elevated. He's being honored, elevated, and respected. Not for breaking the law, but for his commitment to God. So they know him as a believer. Amen. 
So he is elevated. And it's something, it's a testimony when we get promoted for righteousness, through righteousness. Because, you know, now for to get promoted, people got no morals. They'll do anything, cut throat, backstab, kill, murder, slaughter, assassinate, character, anything to get a position. So it's, 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 it's God when a person that could stand on their faith. And then you elevate it from over, which shows you that the world is always watching your walk. Amen. This is why I love him. We talk all the time, you know, so much because of his, his walk with God. Amen. Come on, prophet. Let's, let's, let's see what the Lord is. Amen. You, you, know, you know now, we're in a, in a place where we do, we do whatever. We're in, we're in one format now. When, 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 the, when the church do come back, they're going to come back to it. Like, y'all ain't doing the stuff before we're doing. I'm like, where you been? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. We're going to change up a whole lot of stuff back here. I mean, now, amen. You ain't coming back to the same style and structure. A whole lot been shift. When they, when they ask you that, what's going on here? I'm like, where you been? <laughs> amen. God had come through and done some other things, and we done moved on to another place. Crown messing with me, come back in the name would be changed out there. I've been thinking more than that stuff, you understand? A whole lot going on while we slumbering and sleeping, you know. judging and talking about and condemning and those who could not make it for whatever reason. But for the saints that press their way out, believe me, there's a reward waiting for them. Believe me, there's a reward God has waiting for them. You know, as I, as I felt the Lord, the Lord began to tell me that scripture in the Bible, but if my people who are called by my name, he said, he said, there are my people who are called by my name. Who have humbled themselves, who have sought after my faith, turned from their wicked way and prayed. He said, and this pandemic is a healing of the land. See what the devil means to be a person to one. God takes that thing around and be a blessing. I told y'all a while back when it first started, God said he's separating the faith from the angel. Hallelujah. So just count it all joy that we're going through what we're going through. But know this, God is well able to keep us. He's kept us. God even gave me the 40 days. Well, he even gave me the, 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 the timeline as of April 22nd that this thing going to be lived. The 40 days is over. So for the saints, we okay. God spares and gives. Let me tell you something. 
the three Hebrew boys. They went into the fire for him. God did not stop them from going into the fire. But he delivered them from the heat. Hallelujah. Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't stop them from going, getting cast into the lion's den. But what did he do? He made them pillows. Daniel slept on them. And they purposely did not feed the lions so they'd be hungry to tear them apart. But God stepped in. See, we got a backwards thing. We, we pray for deliverance, which is good. There's some things he would deliver. But there's some things you got to go through. And that brings me to what God told me. But it's about trust. I saw that. I said, Lord, what can I tell you people? He said, they have a shout. They have a praise. They have prayer. But they don't have the trust that they need. They don't have the trust that will bring them through, that will bring them over. Trust in him. Brother Charles, man, he, he was all on it. God gave me some scriptures. I'm going to give y'all that. Because we need scripture. We need the word. We need to be on a solid foundation. Hallelujah. So let me give you what God gave me. Bear with me. I'm not pastor. I'm just saying that. Uh, we did. It said trust in God. The Lord said trust in him. Psalms, the 25th chapter, the second verse. I'm going to go there. Y'all have a Bible. You can if not. I'm going to read the word to you. Psalms, 25th and the second verse. 25th chapter, the second verse. It says, oh my God. I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let me, let not my enemies triumph over me. See, when you trust in God, he won't let you be made ashamed. He won't, he'll cause the enemies to back off. While they're sitting waiting on you to fall, the pit that they dug for you is going to catch them. See, trust in God will deliver you from your enemy. And it'll cause you not to be made ashamed. Also, Psalms 37. It's about trusting God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust in God. And this, y'all, we, we, we say this, but we really need to live this and let it rest in our heart. Psalms 37, verses 3 through 7. Trust in the Lord and do good. Don't just trust God, but do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Trust in God. Do good. He'll feed you. He'll cause you to, with, a, with a, a, a pandemic going on, he'll still cause you to be in the land and be fed. He still won't withhold anything from you if you trust in him. Hallelujah. It says, go on to say, in that fourth verse, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. So when we're going through, just delight in him. Trust in him. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That would you believe in standing on trusting in God for? Delight in him. He's going to bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgments as the noonday. And this is the part of life in that seventh verse. Rest in the Lord. While you trust in the Lord, rest in the Lord. Have that confidence, assurance. Knowing that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. God's going to bring you through. If he brought love, he's been bringing us all this time. We just need to trust him. One more, one more, one more uh, scripture I want to give you. That will be Proverbs, third chapter, fifth verse. Third chapter, fifth verse. That will be five. Trust in the Lord. With all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. That sixth verse says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We say these scriptures from the Bible. We quote these scriptures, but it's not on the tablets of our heart. Saints, we got to get, see, trust. You cannot even have a relationship without trust. You can't have a relationship as friends 
a spouse, and even with God, unless you have trust. Amen. Without trust, that relationship's going to fail. Amen. So we have to learn to trust God. Amen. Learn to believe that God is who we say he is. Right. Saints, two things we really need to do. Learn this word. Put this word in our heart. So when we hear these false prophets and false pastors that pastors have been talking about, you say, you know what, that's not God. And then learn to trust God. No matter what you're going through, no matter what it seems like, trust God. God will see you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe that God is a warrant of them who diligently seek him. Let me tell you, we do need to not go back to tradition and religion but we do need to go back to the basic of Christ when the deacons and the pastors used to pray prayers like my bed wasn't my cooling board and my sheep wasn't my winding board. We need to get back to those old saints. The one thing they did have that we today don't have is that faith and trust in God because that's all they had. They didn't know where the next meal was going to come from because they worked all day long in the field and, 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 and sharecroppers, and they wasn't getting paid, but they, they but but they trusted God. They believed. and I remember, I'm not that old. I used to go to school with patches. I used to have two pair of shoes, one to play in, and one to go to church and dress up in. Amen. Saints, we got so more trust in our monies, our jobs our abilities, but we don't trust God. And without trusting in God, as the Apostle Paul said, you can count that be done. It's nothing. Hallelujah. Like I said, God is good to me. God has brought me. I live in a parish, but the only kinfolk I have over there is my daughter, my wife. But yet, and they asked me, how did you, how did you become a sergeant? Because y'all know within law enforcement, especially sheriff's office, it's political. And if you don't have political ties, then you don't have position. But with God, you don't need that. All you need is favor of God. I go and sit in the sheriff's office and we pray together. How about that? Now we have a new sheriff. He's also, God's putting favor in, in his heart for me. So I give God the glory for that. So my life, like I said, is based on God, trust in God. Hallelujah. So I give God the glory. And again, saints, I, I want to tell you, as I look out over y'all, as I look, I thank God because I'm looking at the pastor and apostle now, the true core of the church. These, y'all that's in here, are going to take greater six days, and God is going to do great and marvelous things through y'all because y'all press y'all way through this. I watch him faithfully sit at, over there on the door. I watch the uh, usher. Every time you need him, look this up. He's there. I, I, I Brother Ware and his wife. You know, all of you, y'all press your way out. And let me tell y'all something, y'all. This is, this is what the Lord has told me. God has been to start, and he's already started, a spirit of healing in this church. Amen. As I stand here before y'all, there are so many of us in here that need a healing in our body. So many of us. And God said he's going to start manifesting a spirit of healing in this place. If you can only trust and believe. No matter what the doctor have told you. No matter what you've gone through. No matter what the report is. Trust in God. And God, God is a guy that he should not die. He's not a man that he should lie. No, he is a son of man. We need to repent. If he said it, he'll do it. God said he's going to start a healing spirit anointing in this church in this place, starting now. Hallelujah. So if you just believe God, just trust God. Hallelujah. Believe God. And receive them today. No matter what the enemy is telling you. Thank you. Mouth know, dry. Y'all get it excited and nervous and now get all dry. But let me tell you something. God is going to do what he said he's going to do. He started, like I said, he's already started. He started with our path. Path to receive a healing. Amen. We start with the pastor. If you need a healing, trust and believe God. Hallelujah. God is.
God is a reward in the deal you seek him. Thanks, but I want to tell you too, we need to, in our hours of going through, learn to praise God. Praise God. Because knowing the one thing, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. He's, he's going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. God be the glory. God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Thank God, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't mind, I'm going to minister just a little bit. As God lays it on my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you. 